Hi, I'm Trevor Magnuson. I'm building my sixth guitar and showing you how. In this session we are going to be continuing the neck and that's going to start with sealing the truss rod. I've already sprayed in some uh, lubricant water dispersant spray uh, and I have cleaned the edges so now we just need to lay a strip of masking tape over the open side, make sure we get a good seal, and then trim the tape uh, across the edges. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's going to keep epoxy uh, out of the workings uh, of the truss rod when we glue it into the neck. I've mixed up some epoxy and so now we're going to spread it along the sides of the channel. We don't want any getting on the bottom and we don't really need to worry about spreading it all the way down because when we insert the truss rod it's going to be pushed all the way down. That's a messy job, so now we just push the truss rod down into the alignment that we previously set up and start clamping. Whoopsies, who picked up what I missed here? Our aim is to get the truss rod as flush as possible with the neck, so to get better clamping we need some little strips across the top like this. Now some of the squeeze out may actually glue these strips to the work, they will easily be sanded off. Now since we're going to be waiting for glue to dry, I'm also inserting the filler strip into the end of the truss rod channel. Well, the epoxy is not yet ready for stress, but it is ready for being cleaned up and that's what I've done. Unfortunately, there was a little bit of aluminium proud of the neck and I have sanded that flat. It has me a little bit worried about metal dust. What we have is the front of the nut and a line for the back of the nut. And I've measured 359 millimeters and drawn another line. That is our body line. That's the length of the 14th fret at 25 and a half inches. I've also double checked that we have enough wood here to cut away a channel for the neck tongue. What we are going to do now is to glue on the heel stack. I'm putting some extra clamp, I'm being very extra careful when clamping this front piece because we want the line here to be as tight as possible because we're going to be carving this at an angle right down to the wood so the tighter this glue line is at the front here the better. I've also put some clamps here at the side to try and keep it as square as possible <clears throat> and I'm being very careful cleaning the squeeze out in the curve of the heel of the neck because we're going to be, uh, we're going to be seeing that. We can sand past it a little bit but 
the better it is now, the easier later. We now have the heel stack attached and I've just been sanding this face so that when it comes time to cut the body line on the bandsaw, the neck will stand square and straight against the mitre. What we need to do now is mark in the neck width at the nut and at the body line, draw straight lines and also manage the transition to the headstock shape. We also need to draw in the heel curve. Okay, after much messing around I have the dimensions of the neck and the shape of the headstock, front and back. I have the rough shape of the heel curve we want to cut and I have the body line that we want to cut. So let's cut. It occurred to me as I was cutting the necklines that I had not yet cut out the heel curve and because of the slope of these lines it would be much better to do that while we have a flat edge. For that we'll change the bandsaw blade. I've cut the neck with about one millimetre to spare on either side and more around the headstock. We're now going to carve the neck shape, which I used to think was the most terrifying part of the job. The actual most terrifying part of the job will come later. We're going to be using the facet method. So I've drawn a line about 15 mils in from the edge here, curving down to about 12 mils along there and the other side. On the back of the neck, We've got about 15 mils there flaring out to nothing around the volute. And the idea is we just cut that facet flat. Now around the curve of the heel we're going to need to use this round rasp. But for doing the flat sections nothing is better than this. If you don't have a Shinto you don't have a shop not even paying me. So let's get started. One thing I neglected to mention, when we're carving the end grain section of the heel, it's important to go towards the center like this to avoid tear outs. Thank <laughs> you. 
I have the facet on this side, about two mil short of the target lines, but only on the flat sections. So now on the curved sections, I need to use the curved rasp to blend those lines in so that they are a smooth, curving, flat facet. Typically, as I start to approach the lines, it turns out that the facets are a little bit crowned. This is not the time for carving in the curve. We want flat lines. This is the first set of facets cut. I've now marked the second set of facet lines. The ones closest uh, to the side are about four millimeters each side of the edge. And the ones in the middle are about five to six millimeters each side of the edge. They widen a little bit up near the heel and they kind of peter out near the headstock. Now you might be a little bit worried about how close to the edge of the neck that we are getting here. Don't be, because remember we have about one millimeter spare which we'll be sanding down later to get the true width. Um, if there's something to be said on a lot of my earlier guitars is that they had very chunky necks because I was a little shy of going as far as I needed to. On this second set of facets, the curved rasp can leave some fairly chunky tooth marks. So I'm using a, a normal file and also my scraper to try and smooth down these lines because we're getting to the stage where we're going to care about making it nice and smooth. Now that we've cut the second set of facets, we're left with something that looks and feels like a guitar neck. It's time to remove the facet lines and the remaining rasp tooth marks, which we'll do with a file and with some sandpaper. And we want to feel any irregularities and sand them down so that we come quite close to where the final neck profile will be. Well, we have a nice looking, nice feeling neck. We're not going to finish dialing in the shape. That will have to wait until the fingerboard is attached. One thing I should also mention is that the contour lines formed by the heel stack join and the scarf joint allow us to see the curve and get it even and symmetrical. But that's enough for this session. Cheers.